recording yeah okay so we are reading uh, the humming effect effect by jonathan goldman we are on chapter 4 of the book we don't have a pdf on this one uh, our thoughts matter sound right. is an exceptionally powerful energy and we've discussed in our last few chapters it has the ability to stimulate the release of hormones in the body to reduce the stress response and induce relaxation to penetrate the body and affect us at a cellular level to rearrange molecular structure and to shape matter itself our ancient cultures believed that sound was the fundamental force of creation and perhaps they were right our modern scientists tell us that everything is vibration everything is sound so everything is a vibration everything is vibrating and everything has a set vibratory frequency we saw that in the videos that we saw in uh, one or two uh, sessions before where the that they made that uh, uh, gooey kind of a thing and when the sound was made different shapes develop we saw it in the cyanatic experiment where the powder is put on the plates and different vibratory frequencies create different shapes so every shape has a sound and every sound has a shape we'd like now like to introduce a vital element that seems to magnify the power of our self created sounds as we've come to understand frequencies are the vibrational wavelengths by which different objects resonate everything is said to have its own resonant frequency or frequencies as is also believed and reinforcing that natural resonance in the body is an important component in the therapeutic and transformational application of sound okay so what does this imply like in this in this fringe episode what what walter did was there was a cassette recorder which was there in the lift so when the electrical discharge took place by that uh, what what's its name was it got imprinted on the magnetic tape inside that cassette player so the cassette had his magnetic imprint so what walter did was he took his took that cassette removed the frequencies of the music playing and he was left with the pure frequency of which represented that uh, 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 joseph and he that is what he tuned into the pigeons so the pigeons when they were released they automatically honed into his frequency so what was that everyone has a unique identity and a unique frequency so every organ in our body has a frequency every object around us has a unique frequency there seems to be another component that is equally if not more important intention yeah so intention also becomes very important when we are using sound frequency like when we are using the reball for example when we are sending healing what is the intent what state of consciousness are you operating from all that starts to matter so when we are do doing sound healing where do we intend the sound frequency to go what do we intend the sound frequency to do that starts to matter it seems that our intentions or thoughts beliefs feelings or purpose can be encoded on the sounds we make to amplify the effect so now again like let us explain cassette, like in the cassette player the the music was there but there was a double exposure it's like a double exposure when we used to have those normal camera films you could double expose a particular uh, uh, a particular shot so like that what happens over here is that when we are making a sound our feelings etc ride that wave it's like hemi sync rides on the pink sound when we are hearing the meditation tracks the placebo effect the word placebo comes from latin meaning i shall please the placebo effect is the improvement that a patient derives from treatment that is not due to the specific treatment itself so what happens what is a placebo this happens a lot that you go to a doctor the doctor doesn't give you any medicine he just gives you some sugar pills and says that this will make you better and you get better so what is happening the mind is playing the game where the medicine is not the active ingredient is not working 
but your your self healing properties get triggered and you do it so what they do is whenever they are testing any kind of medication a lot of placebo tests are done so that the, the pills are made exactly the same but one has the ingredients and the other doesn't and they are given to, to there's a control group who may be having the placebo tablets and the other group is having the actual tablets and then a distinction is made as to whether there is an improvement or not and how much of an improvement is there due to placebo and how much of an improvement is there due to the actual ingredient in the tablet as a simplified example consider a clinical study of a new medication the study subjects are the known to them divided into two groups chimangla your mic one group receives the medication and the other group receives a placebo a pill that looks just like the medicine but has only inert ingredients both groups are told what the positive effects of the medication will be amazingly enough some of the subjects in the placebo group will experience those positive effects even without having taken the actual medication their belief will be so powerful that it affects their physical body this is the placebo effect so there was an uh, there was an experimental drug which came out and in the beginning trials they came out with a, a publication that it's really really effective now there was this cancer patient who actually took those took that medication and he got totally well okay he was totally all right and then after about 6 to 8 months again publication started to come out that that drug did not work it was ineffective and guess what happened the guy again got the cancer back or that whatever illness he was suffering from he again got it back so what was actually working was his belief that yes the drug work that repaired his body and made him whole again and then as soon as that other publication came out boom it went back to where it started from so placebo effect is extremely powerful effect rather than explore the powerful implications of the phenomenon scientists largely ignored the placebo effect considering it to be simply a factor that had to discount or circumvent in their studies that is until the last decade or so when researchers began to see the significance of this effect in terms of their connection between the mind and the body yeah so there were many more experiment experiments done on this thing there is this book healing words we have it in the library by larry dossi so they did a lot of work on the on the power of prayer how prayer can actually affect the healing in a particular person which is the same thing that we are doing with the reborn so again the mind and mind can affect the body and uh, incidentally <coughs> we are going to be doing this experiment andrew is going to be talking to us on the uh, on the 11th about the experiment that we are going to be doing on the 13th there's a lady who is in uh, somewhere in europe she is going to be hooked on to the mind mirror and uh, shimangla will be hooked on over here and there'll be other few people hooked on uh, in various parts of the world and we are going to be able to see everyone's brain wave pattern on the screen so we are going to be sending healing as a group awareness is going to join that so there's a special meditation which is being made to send healing to that particular lady who is in europe and we are wanting to check what's the effect in the brain wave pattern of the healy that lady as well as when these people are sending healing and the uh, they are hooked up onto the mind mirror what is the effect in their brain wave pattern and whether there's any kind of synchronization that will be taking place or not so it's going to be a very nice experiment that we are going to be doing on the 13th most probably we will start at 6:30 in the evening with that experiment now the placebo effect the power of our beliefs to dramatically affect and influence our physical bodies and perhaps more is being vigorously investigated scientists doctors researchers and healers are realizing that for many individuals healing may be amplified and accelerated by their beliefs so this is very important what are you believing in 
in the olden times many times in the villages etc there was one doctor who actually went through four, four generations okay so the guy knew the entire family history he knew how the people work just the doctor coming into the house started to heal people again the belief system starting to play a game over here what once was dismissed as a bothersome factor that had to be worked around in clinical trials in order to accurately gauge the effectiveness of treatment is now being seriously considered as a potent adjunct or facilitator to treatment this new development helps validate that important component of sound healing we previously mentioned intention so intention is extremely important when they are doing experiments in quantum physics they have found that the presence of a, a different experimenter will give a different result why again because of intention what is the intent with which that person is participating in the experiment will change the result of the experiment so if it can do it at a quantum level then why can't intention affect us at this physical level because ultimately this physical level is built on the quantum level leslie university we now ask you to kindly step into our time machine and travel back to the mid 1980s when jonathan was completing his masters degrees at leslie university in cambridge massachusetts which focused on the therapeutic uses of sound as a healing modality he had collected and was correlating systems of using sound for healing and he was working on a book based on this research many of these sound healing systems involved mic. resonating mike is here only no no it, it dropped many of these sound healing systems involved resonating the energy centers of our body known as the chakras with sound and a fair number involved systems for resonating the physical organs with sound jonathan has know that every chakra has its frequency every organ has its frequency we've been talking about it jonathan had been collecting this information for nearly a decade and had amassed documentation on hundreds of systems from different scientists and spiritual masters the problem was that despite their claims of success most of these systems did not correlate or even agree with one another okay so again there are so many different methods we ourselves have seen we've seen hemi sync we've seen biofield tuning there and then there are sound bowls there's so many different methods of sound healing you'd have spiritual master a using one specific mantra for a particular chakra and spiritual master b using a completely different mantra for that same chakra with both of them reporting the same beneficial results or they'd use the same mantra for different chakras and again have matching results similar issues arose with the scientists who were kind enough to share their work dr x would use a certain frequency for an organ while dr y would use a completely different frequency for that same organ and yet they would have the same beneficial results yeah so now again when we are looking at from the perspective of the life system and royal raymond rife's book there's an entire book like that which has all frequencies for various organs various diseases etc and there are multiple frequencies which they have seen work for multiple processes and he she has actually nina has actually collected the data from various people and collated that data so one person says that okay this frequency works for the stomach another person says that this frequency works so what she has done is she has collated it and she says that okay why don't you all try the frequency and whichever works for you ultimately works for you so again intention over here will play a very major part what are you intending that that mantra or that frequency or that sound is a carrier wave for your intent at the ultimate analysis 
Jonathan comes from a family of medical doctors. His grandfather, father and brother have all been MDs and at the same time of this research he was extremely left-brained focusing on the logical and not the intuitive. Thus, when examining the discrepancies among all these different systems, he found himself in a state of intellectual angst. Yeah, because this stuff cannot be intellectually understood. It has to come with feeling. It has to be felt that, okay, this is working for this person. For example, when Ravindraji is giving the mudras to someone, how does he assess the mudra is working or not? He will do a thing and then he will feel that in his body, where is he feeling it? And then he'll say, okay, if I do this, it is affecting this part of my body. Then he'll give the mudra to some people and he'll see whether it is working for them or not. If it is not working, then he'll again shift it. He'll again change it. The same thing happens with biofield tuning. When we are taking the tuning fork, we hear the frequencies changing. We feel the vibrations changing. And with that, we can discern as to what is happening. Okay. So again, different, the same thing can give different results. How was it possible that all these different systems have the same positive results? If they were not in agreement, there was too much variation among them. It made no sense. A life-changing experience. Jonathan remembers sitting in front of his computer so long ago that it used a DOS operating system, trying to figure out how all of these different systems that utilize sound for healing could coexist with one another. He simply could not understand how they could possibly be so varied and yet still all work producing healing results. He sat with his head in his hands in immense despair. Suddenly, Jonathan had a profound thought. It is not only the frequency of the sound that creates the effect. It is also the intention of the person making and receiving the sound that causes the outcome. He opened his eyes and began typing the words, frequency plus intent is equal to healing. Those words appeared in his first book, Healing Sounds, as did a corollary. Vocalization plus visualization equals manifestation. Later, he came up with other variants, including sound plus belief is equal to outcome and vibration plus feeling is equal to creation. So again, you have to have intention and feeling. Without that, it will not manifest. So the logic and the feeling has to go hand in hand for manifestation to take place. If you're logically thinking it can't be done, but you want to do it, you will have a resistance. If you, if you're, if you want to do something and logically you're being told not to do it, again, there will be a resistance. So the thinking and the feeling has to go hand in hand for manifestation to take place. So likewise, vocalization creating an energy field as well as visualization that yes, this is manifesting, will create manifestation. What exactly is intent? From our perspective, it is the consciousness or thoughts, feelings or visualization that we encode upon the sounds that we make. And incidentally, whether or not we are aware of it, we encode our language with intent all the time. So again, we come back. No doubt. We come back to the state of consciousness with which we are saying something. So now, many times, what will happen is the tone that we use to say the words will clearly indicate what our intent is. So I can say the same words but have a totally different meaning to the words because of the intent which is there as a carrier frequency. Like again, we use this example when an artist is painting a painting, when he is painting it, whatever he is thinking, what is the state of consciousness he is operating in is in the painting, whether he likes it or he doesn't. Because that is where that creativity is coming from with that kind of intent. 
and incidentally whether or not we are aware of it we encode our language with intent all the time no doubt you've had people say to you i love you the intent of the words will be very different depending on whether they come from a romantic partner a sibling a friend or perhaps even someone who is actually peeved with you think about it the words the sound vibration frequency or whatever you want to call it may be the same but the energy behind the words the intent feeling visualization or whatever is very different and because of that encoding the effect of the totality of the sound is also very different so again whenever we are talking whenever we are saying something a lot of more information is added to that particular speaking after many years of working in the field of sound healing we have discovered that this initial formula frequency plus intent is equal to healing may be one of the most important aspects of the healing nature of sound so again frequency because vibration plus whatever we are intending creates manifestation manifestation is also healing at the time of jonathan's research the idea of intent was virtually unheard of particularly in the scientific community you can substitute many other words for it visualization belief feelings purpose no one word is sufficient since it is basically the consciousness of those making and receiving the sound that is so important with regard to the effect of the sound so again it boils down to what is your consciousness here the resilience grid play can come into a very very powerful come in very powerfully where are you on the grid when you are doing something that will indicate what will manifest so if you are on the left side of the grid it's very difficult to manifest something which is uplifting if you are on the right side of the grid it's much easier to manifest something that is uplifting so what is the state of consciousness with which you are operating whenever you are doing anything when you are saying anything when you are being anything you can substitute many other words for it visualization belief feeling purpose no one word is sufficient since it is basically the consciousness of those making and receiving the sound that is so important with regard to the effect of the sound at the time the idea that our thoughts could that our thoughts could somehow be encoded on sound and have an influence was not taken seriously by those in the scientific community that however has changed now there are television specials on the subject of intention and a plethora of books by distinguished authors in both the scientific and medical communities water crystal photography one of the most visually stunning demonstrations of intention comes from the work of dr masaro imoto a japanese scientist who photographed water under a special dark field microscope which allows the object being viewed to appear as a bright image on a dark background dr imoto would expose water to various influences from physical contaminants like chemicals to more intangible factors like music or prayer he would then freeze the water and photograph the resulting ice crystals so we we've, we've uh, discussed this many times dr imoto's experiments basically what happens is water freezes at minus 4 degrees so when he used to take the water and freeze it and then as the water starts to unfreeze that is the time when the crystal crystals start to form and that is when he was was using the dark field microscope to actually photograph the crystals i can show you some pictures maybe uh, today or tomorrow let's see remarkably dr emoto found the, that intention carries great weight in the structuring of the ice crystals for example he would fill a series of jars with water and then label each jar with various words and phrases he found that water was from jars labeled with positive words like love thank you or appreciation 
transformed into beautiful geometrically shaped snowflake like crystals when frozen words with negative intent such as i hate you froze into mud like structures yeah so we But, did this experiment in the mc square program that's a manifestation and creation square program which also uh, where we actually grew seeds etc and in in let me tell you in that 7 days uh, we had leaves coming out of the seeds and what we were told we of course were holding it we were sending good intentions <coughs> we were also told to write love peace and all that and stick it to the bowl in which the seeds were growing so it actually had a very powerful effect perhaps the most powerful of these images are two photographs of water from the lake at fujiwara dam in japan this water was quite polluted and the image in the photograph looked like mud dr imoto then asked a spiritual master to chant and pray over the same water for about 20 minutes and then he froze and photographed it again the resultant image look like a beautiful geometrically perfect snowflake these images wondrously demonstrate the combined power of sound and intention okay so what does this show that a person praying over something can affect it when dr brian daily had given his talk on biofield imaging there was one video that was taken where a person just simply sent a intent into the earth and immediately we could see a burst of energy in that entire uh, entire uh, video so what what does it show that our intention when we are saying something when we are doing something can have an amazing effect on whatever uh, we are intending so that's why it's extremely important for us to watch our thoughts to actually understand be consciously aware of what we are thinking and robert Mon monroe also said that ultimately the thing is that you have to watch your thoughts if you want to develop escape velocity you want to increase your level of consciousness then what you are thinking how are you thinking and what state of consciousness you are uh, operating from which side of the grid you are operating from becomes extremely extremely important shivangla you are on while the actual statistics vary water comprises anyway from 70 to 90% of our physical body if a chanted prayer which from our perspective is nothing more or less than positive sound with intent can transform the mud like quality of polluted water to the crystalline beauty of purified water is this not a plausible demonstration of our formula frequency plus intent is equal to healing okay anyone any questions on this till now what we've done in this chapter because it's very important no questions okay go ahead good vibrations we began this chapter talking about the placebo effect and the power of belief There are now many scientists who are doing outstanding work with regard to validating the importance of the placebo effect. One of the most influential is Dr. Bruce Lipton. His groundbreaking book Biology of Belief is one of the most decisive works regarding the importance of belief. This is a great book and uh, if you all want it's a little technical but if you all want we can actually read that book. It's it's a classic biology of belief Dr Lipton writes about a study of a group of people who had been referred to a surgeon for arthroscopic knee surgery a procedure that is utilized to reduce pain in the knee as part of this experiment only half the patients had the actual surgery the other half were cut open and then stitched back up so that it looked like they had had the surgery even though they had not as it turns out both groups healed and experienced pain reduction at the same rate here we have a remarkable example of the placebo effect those who believe they had had the operation 
healed as well as those who did not have the actual operation so again the placebo effect coming into play because in their mind they had had the operation so the healing took place dr lipton also did research on a cellular level common theory has he long held that the nucleus of a cell which holds its genetic material functions like a brain governing the cell's processes and interactions if that were true however then nature heredity with would reign supreme over nature nurture environment to prove that environmental factors may be more of an influence on us than had been previously thought dr lipton decided to enucleate cells that is to remove their nucleus leaving the rest of each cell undisturbed if the nucleus functioned as a brain he reasoned the nucleated cells would quickly lose all function so dr bruce lipton was the uh, originator of the concept called epigenetics it would lose all function and die how long would the death take minutes hours no one had ever done this work before as it turns out the nucleated cells actually survived for 2 months or more and they were still able to make complex responses to environmental stimuli so again there's a field in operation okay it's not only the brain so we also say that all the information is stored in a holographic manner so one part of the brain doesn't have all the information it's all over the brain and it's actually all over the field also the nucleus and its genes therefore could not be the brain of the cell dr lipton continued his research eventually establishing that the membrane of the cell was the driving force behind the cell's processes and interaction so again the membrane of the cell has these key like uh, uh, sort sort so any chemical which comes in slots into that particular it's like a key and a uh, key hole it slots in and it creates a reaction in the cell so the membrane acts like has a lot to play with how the cell actually interacts and reacts to the stimulus that the environment is providing he also determined that the membrane was highly responsive to environmental stimuli including both physical and energetic that is vibrational factors when we asked dr lipton if he thought sound could be an environmental factor that contributed to the cellular functioning he began to sing the chorus of the beach boys song good vibrations to us that is all it is he exclaimed the vibrations we manifest to and for ourselves so we are also we are constantly reacting to vibrations and we are also constantly creating vibrations so this is one of the reasons when you go to a highly spiritual person you start getting affected automatically you go to a very angry person and you start getting affected immediately provided if you are holding your resilience then you won't get affected so the idea is to increase our field the strength of our field so we start affecting our environment rather than allowing the environment to affect us so the name of the game is again consciousness expansion so the more expanded state of consciousness we are in the more resilient our field starts to become the quantum field we would be remiss if we didn't mention the work of dr joe dispenza and his innovative book you are the placebo dr dispenza in a is a chiropractor and a neurologist who in his early 20s was involved in an accident that caused severe trauma to his spine his doctors told him that if he ever wanted to walk again he would need steel rods inserted in his spine joe visited numerous physicians and received the same diagnosis but for some reason he was guided not to undergo surgery but instead to heal himself for weeks 
Joe utilized a form of visualization that helped to focus his awareness on healing the fractured vertebrae of his spine. It was apparently an arduous process, but six weeks later, he took his first step by himself and slowly began to walk. This experience led him on a journey of self-discovery, which included investigation of meditation, the brain, quantum mechanics, and miracle healings. This is another example of the power of intent. So again, Perhaps, I, I know I know two people who've gone through this kind of thing and have received this diagnosis. One is Joe McMonagan. He fell from I think forty feet up from a helicopter and his entire spine was crushed. The doctors told him he will not walk. Okay. But he is walking today and that was about 40 years back. So he's actually managed the whole thing uh, just by the power of will and his self-healing. Of course, he's had a lot of treatments, etc. Now, of course, he has the rods and all, but very much later, he actually healed himself. The other person is Bob. Bob Holberg, who comes here uh, to India to conduct programs here from the Institute, he also had a massive accident. His spine was also very badly injured. His entire face had to be reconstructed. And the doctors had told him that he will not recover. There's no chance. But he also did it. Okay. Again, with the power of visualization. And oh, both of them, actually, Hemisync really helped them to be able to recover. Both of them attribute the healing a lot to the hemisync process, which allowed them to visualize going to an altered state of consciousness. For us, mm -hmm. perhaps the most interesting aspect of Dr. Dispenza's work. Involves what he calls the quantum field. We like to think of it as the unmanifested part of our potential reality that which contains unlimited possibilities, possibilities can then be made manifest by directing our attention to them. So now, always we have a choice. I'm going on this timeline and I have a choice. I can go here or I can go here. Now, suppose I go there. So now that is what I'm paying attention to. So that is what is manifesting. But then when I come here and I go here, so this line is also there and this line is also there. Now, this is what fringe is also all about. Ultimately, we are going to come to alternate realities, realities as we go further into fringe, where the realities are existing simultaneously. Where we pay our attention to, that is what manifests. So, possibilities that can be made manifest by directing our attention to them. So, all the alternate realities and possibilities are there. What are we paying attention to? Okay. So that's why it's very important to understand what state of consciousness are we operating from. If I'm constantly operating in a depleted state of consciousness, ki nahi hoga, constantly cribbing, then that is what that is the reality that we will focus on, and that is what will manifest in our life. If we start focusing on uplifting stuff, growth, what are we learning? How are we doing it? Being happy, being joyful, automatically that is what is going to manifest in your life. Because every possibility exists. This is another thing which we, which I experienced very starkly when we did the Exploration 27 uh, program. You go into the planning center. And in the planning center, incidentally, Sudha, she just did the Exploration 27 program. I don't know if she's here today. But we had literally exactly the same experience. I did the X27 two years back. But in the planning center, literally, she experienced the same thing. Where, uh, I, In my experience, I went to a place where they had a globe in front of them and they were putting stimulus into the globe. And they were seeing the reaction of that particular stim stimulus on the globe. So now, if this thing happens, then this will happen. If this pays attention, then this will happen. So all the possibilities are existing at the same time. Our friend and colleague Greg Braddon writes about the observer effect. In many of his books, including The Divine Matrix, it seems that an electron behaves differently depending on whether or not it is being observed. When observed, the electron behaves as a particle. When left by itself in that unmanifested quantum field, it behaves as a wave. 
So this is a classic double split experiment where light can act as a particle. That means it will shine and it will go on one spot or it will create a wave pattern. So when it's creating a wave pattern, it implies that all the possibilities exist. But when we pay attention to it, it becomes a particle. So it will shine only on one particular spot. So when, when we are paying attention to something, it can actually shift what is happening to it. This is also what we said in quantum uh, experiments. The presence of an observer will change the result of the experiment. For many, this concept is difficult to believe. How can our mere observation change the physical manifestation of an object, no matter how small? Yet the observer effect is one of the cornerstones of quantum physics. The implications are enormous and possibly lend rationale to the remarkable idea that we have the ability to manifest reality through our thoughts and our belief system. People all around the world are teaching various techniques that enable students to do what seems to be the impossible. From our perspective, much of these seemingly miraculous abilities can be attributed to the power of intention. So this is very much like, you know, in sports. Previously, they had the four mile barrier, four minute barrier for the mile. Now, no one could, no one was able to break that barrier. Then one person broke that barrier. Now, that barrier is constantly getting broken. 100 meters, the barrier was 10 seconds. Then one person broke it and now multiple people are breaking the barrier. So again, we actually can achieve much more than what we think we can achieve, provided we stop thinking we can't achieve it. Several years ago, we were about to give a workshop and were fixing a cup of tea in the kitchen of the venue. We had just poured the water and not yet turned off the stove. A friend came into the room to visit and before we were able to warn her, she leaned on the stove burner and severely burned her hand. She had been trained in several therapies that utilized quantum field theory and immediately held her hand away from her sight. We understood what she was doing. If she didn't observe her burnt hand, she could potentially restore it through visualizing her hand in the quantum field and creating it as being perfectly unscathed. So again, as soon as someone observes something, the result becomes fixed. They have done these experiments with random number generators in the institute, or I, I not in the it's in, mentioned in the book conscious universe. Uh, what they did was they recorded a tape of these random number generators where they the random number generator generates zeros or ones. Okay. Now it's like the flip of a coin. Now generally speaking, if you flip the coin a hundred times, technically you should get hundred tails and hundred uh, uh, heads. heads. Okay. Now what they did was they recorded that track. They recorded the tape maybe two years back. Now, after two years, a group of people was told that intend that in that track, there are more zeros than ones. And they intended it. And then that track was opened and they found that there were more zeros than ones. Now, this comes into play is can the future affect the past and can the past affect the future? So there's another book, uh, written by another gent a lady. She's done a lot of research on all this on NDEs, etc. She calls it future memory. So he says that if I can have a memory of the past, why can't I have a memory of the future? So you can actually affect the past by doing something in the present, provided you don't know that it has already taken place. Now, if someone has observed the result, then it becomes fixed. This is what he, she's explaining over here. So she, the hand burned, but she hid her hand. So she didn't actually see her hand burn. And then she used the quantum uh, philosophy to, the, to imagine that the hand was healed and the hand was actually healed.
last paragraph don't worry she said i can fix your mic just don't let me see it neither of us did turning off the stove and ignoring the situation as best as we could the next day she came back and showed us her hand it was quite normal looking perhaps only a slightly pinkish color where the coils of the stove had burned it through the quantum field she had been able to heal her hand using visualization belief and intent so there's another video a fire walk it is, it is by joe desperenza only if i'm not mistaken or by greg baden and he actually shows in the video the uh, uh, a tumor getting removed and it's actually seen on the screen again the power of intent a fire walk more than 25 years ago jonathan took part in a fire walk an enormous bonfire had been built and after it had been reduced down to coals all the ashes were spread out for people to walk on during this time the facilitator had been giving instructions on how to fire walk it was a 6 hour workshop these included an affirmative chant of i can walk on fire i can do anything along with a mantra cool most that the fire walkers were supposed to visualize while they walked on the hot coals it was cool moss cool moss sorry these included an affirmative chant of i can walk on fire i can do anything along with a mantra cool moss that the fire walkers were supposed to visualize while they walked on the hot coals jonathan had not attended the workshop but when it came time for the fire walk he slipped into line with those who wanted to participate in the walking on the fiery bed of hot coals he walked across the coals reciting the cool moss mantra and did not get burnt he remembers that for him the experience did not seem much out of the ordinary i always knew i could walk on fire and i did however his friend who did the fire walk had a different experience on my third step his friend said i thought i can't be doing this and i got a blister that covered my entire foot this seems like an early example of the power of intent the positive or negative ability of belief to create an outcome okay so again what are you thinking that becomes very important so if you are thinking depleting thoughts if you are, i don't like the word negative and positive now simply because what can be negative in one scenario can become very positive in another and what is positive in one scenario can become negative in another so i'm saying depleting and renewing so the more renewing thoughts the more uplifting thoughts we have the better it is for us should, uh i should read there's only one page left finish it let's read yeah okay read a little quickly please quantum sound we have given you scientific explanations for many aspects of healing like transmitting the correct resonant frequency into the body to strengthen it or using a frequency to shatter cancer cells certainly these methods are all viable and helpful but from our perspective there is more much more our thoughts can delve into quantum soup of unmanifested of unmanifested reality and cause the sound that we create to have very unique abilities so again we can we can go into a state of consciousness which can tap into the unmanifested that is not yet manifested so this is how people predict things they go into an altered state of consciousness and they can come out with the probabilities of what will happen so they are tapping into the unmanifested okay depending upon our intention the sound we create can have very different effects indeed the frequency plus intent is equal to healing concept may hold the secret to how any vibratory source may be used to heal we will soon turn specifically to the hum 
which may be the most potent of all tones to be utilized in quantum sound. In particular, the power of the hum seems to be particularly resplendent in terms of obeying the intention that we give it. It is an extraordinary sound for manifestation. So when we are humming, we are creating a vibratory frequency. And when we add intent into the mix, it can become very powerful. Recently, both of us had sore throats. We closed our eyes and began humming. While we hum, focused our intent on the sound resonating and healing the part of our throat that hurt. As we hummed, we visualized a white light bombarding the cells of our throat. As the humming vibrating the cells in our throat, perhaps they boosted circulation, bringing more oxygen to them. Or perhaps the vibrations caused the cells to release nitric oxide. Or perhaps any of the other physiological benefits we mentioned in Chapter 1 came into being. And perhaps some quantum effect what was happening that was beyond our current level of understanding. Regardless, when we were done humming, the pain in our throats was gone. Okay, so again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating it. It is quite possible that while we were humming, we could have thought of something entirely different than healing our throat and still the pain might have gone away. However, we have spent too many years working with sound, especially self-created sound, not to know that something special occurs when you combine both frequency and intent. Quantum sound manifests the outcome more rapidly and more powerfully than simply by making the sound without intention. So intention but, really makes it powerful. But in order to believe this, you will probably need to experience it yourself. And in order to experience this phenomenon, you will need to go on to our next chapter in which we begin to work with techniques that allow you to experience the power of humming. Before we move on, a final few words. And it seems fitting to place these words at the end of this chapter. We bring your awareness to them. Because we believe they are of extreme importance with regard to the power of prayer and meditation. There is a reason why almost all the prayers on this planet are vocalized, whispered, chanted, read aloud, spoken or sung. It is this. Sound amplifies the power of prayer. Prayer amplifies the power of sound. Together, sound and prayer intention, thought, belief, build a mutually reinforcing feedback loop. It is that simple and that important. Okay, so again, intention, thoughts, beliefs, all these matters. So our belief system, what do we actually believe in, creates a lot of power and a lot of energy. So automatically, the idea is, uh, in the Monroe, in the Gateway Voyage, the first thing he says is you have to transcend your belief system because that is what is stopping you. The more, uh, uh, I mean, the more uh, invested you are in your belief system, the more stuck you become because you're not looking at the other possibilities. So the idea is to look at the possibilities, to experience the experience for the idea of the experience. And then once you've experienced it and you have knowledge about it, you can transcend it because you become wise to it. Okay. So transcension of belief system is a very, very important part in the growth of consciousness. So again, belief matters. Thoughts matter. Intent matters in anything that we do. And especially when we are making sounds because we can actually create a lot through the power of sound. Anyone, any questions? Anything to say? There's something in the chat. I didn't see it. Healing words. The author is Larry Dossie. Okay, if you haven't seen Fringe, go ahead and see it. It's a nice series. It brings up some interesting concepts. Anyone, anything, please unmute and say 
if there's anything. Okay, no one wants to say anything? Mm -hmm. No one can hear me. So it was interesting, Niket. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. And it's Thank quite you. You, you keep on explaining as you keep moving ahead. So yeah. Okay, so if nothing anyone to say, then we are uh, meeting for meditation at three forty-five. Yeah. Today we don't okay. have uh, nine fifteen, but tomorrow we are going to have nine fifteen, and it's going to be very interesting. Again, it's on power of intention using healing. So it's very much connected with whatever we are reading. Uh, Andrew has done a beautiful presentation. I went through it. Very nice what he said. Brilliant. So see you all. We'll see you all in Ram Ram. Ram Ram. Thank you. Ram Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Niket ji. Thank you, everyone. Ram Ram. Thank you. Thank you, Niket. Thank you, Sumangala. Thank you. Ram Ram.